the bitter end. <laughs> um, so, okay, I didn't actually have anything prepared, and so this may not be very good closing remarks, and I don't really have very good feelings about closing things off, anyways. Um, but just to, I guess to give a little context for the thinking that engendered this meeting. Um, as a lot of you, some of you know, um, my father passed away in December. And this, well, okay, actually, edits for the article that Carla uh, gave me line edits for. And organizing this conference were like the very first two things that I did right after that. Um, and it was really interesting because um, there's a real starkness to, you know, like there's the academic job market, but like I was like, oh, the world's gonna take care of me, you know, like or it's it was there's just a starkness to the to life after that, you know, that just because we had just gone through all these decisions about when to stop feeding and stuff like that. So that the the kind of worries that. Um, keep me awake at night normally, <laughs> we're gone, you know, and I had other great insomnia moments, but, you know, not the normal ones. Um, and I think, cause then, and then I remember having a talk with Corey, you didn't hear this because you weren't at the beginning, where I was like, yeah, I, you know, I kind of want to do a conference, you know, about love, and or I could do one on, like, the sciences of species, and she was like, oh, go for the sciences of species, and I was like, I don't know. You know, you're like, she, and she was like, well, it's, you're going to get some weird people, and I was like... <laughs> <laughs> but it but it got me think I was like because I was like no I really want the love but I had no idea why and so it got me to thinking you know like well why is this so important to me um, and I think um, one of the things that was interesting to me about my father's passing is kind of the obverse of what Carlo was talking about and I think in some ways Carolyn brought up is it felt me. It felt to me that I was more prepared for my dog dying, because that's also something that's impending in my world, um, and it's impending. It's important in a couple ways, and and so I don't know. Actually, I wrote out a thing that might be just easier to read. That's um, basically you know when you like misread a call for um, papers and you think <laughs> that they want like the paper. You know, and it's really like they want a description of what you're going to submit. So I did that for um, this thing for the Trans Studies Quarterly. Uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, so more Pitbull stories. Um, just this last one. Um, because I think there's a lot of stuff that you're going to, yeah, okay. Okay. So while trans species relationships are everywhere in transgender phenomena, witness the sourcing of Prembrun from pregnant mares. Uh, this, I want to speak to how a practice of relating based on a training relationship and shared navigation of public spaces shapes a specific doing of transgender. The central formulation for me is that my gender, and I have my gender, air quotes, is made possible by my relationship with my dog, a pit bull, such that my gender inheres in the space between us rather than in, say, me. Um, both breed and gender mark fiercely defended categories, neither of them quite natural in ways that bring into question what natural even means. Indeed, there is no such thing as a pit bull. There are American pit bull terriers, American Staffordshire terriers, American bulldogs, and British bull terriers. There's lots of bull plus terrier combos. Proliferating names that reveal the category problem at the heart of the term pit bull, a category problem compounded by vague understandings of canine phenotypes that lead to a sense of, I know it when I see it, as a mode of identification. These problems of looking, kind, and identification reveal how pit bulls are also familiar with the violences of categories and the violations of living between them. That's an indirect quote from Judith Butler. I close, okay. So, yeah. A hard glare, a sharp stare, a soft glance, a warm welcome. There's a lot of looking in my experience of being a trans person and a dog owner. I'm familiar with glances that dance away, quizzical eyebrows over IDs, uncomfortable shrugs, being chased out of bathrooms, people crossing the street, dog owners who won't let my dog meet theirs, humans who shield their children from us. There's so much to see in us. 
For me, the uneasiness of being trans is deeply imbricated, Carla's least favorite word of mine, <laughs> in the uneasiness of owning a dog that looks like my dog, a pit bull. And for me, the happiness of being trans is caught up in the wonder of living with a creature like my dog. We are trans species, trans canis, trans a bull, trans surely something, me channeling Ava. <laughs> When I was in the thick of my hormonal transition, legible as neither female nor male, I had a good number of awkward moments in which folks, unsure how to read me, reacted with fear, anger, disgust. But I had my dog. Pitbull, uh, Pitbull, Haley, was my rock, somewhat literally weighing in at 65 pounds of muscle, um, <laughs> with a tendency to look one in the eye as if weighing your motives. She has just, it's a calm stare, but it's a stare. Um, Haley took care of me. A total marshmallow on the inside, or, well, I'm sure there's some fleshliness to that. From the outside, Haley looks, well, a bit mean, especially because she's had her ears cropped by her first owner. Um, so even on the days I was frustrated with the binding, it's flattening your boobage, and hadn't bothered to shave, no one messed with me when I had Haley, when we were a we. Indeed, my gender then and now was really my gender because in so many ways, it was and is made possible by the space between us, the space between me and my dog. Haley also knows what it's like to be between categories. There is a resonance between the instability of dog breeds, phenotypic kinds maintained through kennel club policing, and the instability of gender. Fiercely defended, neither quite natural in ways that brings into question what natural even means. To name a dog a pit bull is to name a dog a number of ways. Lover, fighter, muscular, short-haired, squat, big-headed, fierce, lughead is one of my personal favorites. <coughs> Fire plug. To be a pit bull lover is to be in love with a creature vaguely defined. To be, a pit, to be with a pit bull is to be with a creature who also experiences, what I noted earlier, the violence of categories and the violation of living between them. And I think that's like something that's really interesting to me. And for me to be with a pit bull is t to be with, live with, and love with a critter who makes just a little of that, dare I say, trans awesomeness <laughs> possible. <laughs> Which is another way of saying that I cannot imagine life as a trans person without Haley and that I think she must know what it, is not, what it is not to fit into a category and to be read into other categories in spite of one's best intentions. Um, love is a tough term, a hard language. I, this is a vague attempt at definition. To love is to take on, to shoulder, to be responsible, to care, to share. Plenty of folks who love pit, bull these days, pit bulls these days are rather cruel to them. Love is never innocent, to love can be hurtful. Haley is now an elderly 11 years old. I'm careful to shepherd, actually she's 12 now. I'm careful to shepherd her through these, her twilight years, knowing that her hearing, never good, is now mostly gone, and that her vision is failing. She is unsure of how to move through the world, and she trusts and relies on me, much as I trusted and relied on her earlier, to keep her safe. Our we has not faltered. We are trans species, trans caretakers, trans, looking at Nina here, lovers, there is a tenderness to this that I find so very hard to describe. I am still young, or I feel really young, and she is fragile, old, gentle, mine. I hope that I can keep her safe and sound in the way that she kept me safe when I needed her most. She is my rock, and I aspire to be hers. So. I wanted to thank so much for coming and oh, thank you. yeah, no closing. I, I, this is an opening into like all kinds of really interesting new conversations, and I'm just really excited that everybody got to meet each other, even because yeah. So thank you so much for coming. And thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Oh, and your name.